This video is sponsored by Melanote. Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to 10 portrait photography tips and tricks part two. Let's get started. Tip number one is to use a fan. It is such a simple tip, but if you've never used a fan during your photo shoot, you have to try it. Not only does it spice up the picture and add another creative element to your portraits with winded hair, but it will also make your model feel a lot more confident. I don't know what it is, but when the fan is on and it's blowing your hair, it makes you feel the same type of way. It makes you feel like a Victoria's Secret model. I love using the fan for my self-portraits because I'm still not the most comfortable in front of the camera and it works magic. You don't need any specific fan in my opinion, but the recommendation I can give you is to get the round head ones. That way you can easily direct it towards the hair more precisely. So definitely try this one out and if you have no hair, don't worry, I have a lot more tips coming. Tip number two is to make use of ordinary things. If you want to improve your photography, try this exercise. Look around your home and find some ordinary objects that you can make use in your photography to create extraordinary pictures. Here are a few examples. I used to shoot a lot of these cool portraits through a simple dirty window to create interesting reflections. One tip I have for you guys when you try this out is to make sure it's dark inside the room where the model is and that you are not getting any direct sunlight into the window from the outside. Gloomy cloudy weather is the best to try this technique. When I was super broke and living with my parents, I would turn everything into a prop. Here I used an old curtain taped to the wall in the bathtub and it came out so cool. These were one of my favorite pictures at the time. Take a piece of cardboard, poke a bunch of holes in it and place it to the window with some direct lighting to create cool shadow effects. So my challenge for you guys is to come up with some interesting ideas using ordinary objects you find in your home. If you can make them look amazing, you will definitely improve your creativity and your photography game. Tip number three, step up your mood board game. I have been using Milanote to create my mood boards for a while now and every time I show them in my videos, you guys ask me about it. So I'm excited to tell you more about them, especially since they are sponsoring today's video and supporting my channel. With Milanote, you can create beautiful professional looking mood boards to both inspire you and set the creative direction for a photo shoot. Here you can see several mood boards that I've put together for recent projects. Once you finish putting together your mood board, Milanote has so many amazing built-in templates to help keep the rest of your photography business on track. One of my favorites is the call sheet. I use this one most often when I work with agencies or a bigger team. What's cool about it is not only you can share inspo pictures here, but also add things like notes for the model, time and date, location of the photo shoot with a Google map link, to-do lists that will remind you if you haven't completed them yet, information about your team, links to stylist, designer, makeup artist, comments, and other fun features. But one of my favorite features is the ability to let your clients or team comment on the mood board to get their feedback, which is so, so useful. There are so many ways to customize your boards and make them fit your personal brand. Milanote will definitely elevate your business and make an impression on any client. Or it can be a great outlet to get your creative juices floating and plan out your next project. So if you are interested, Milanote is available for free with no time limit to sign up via the link in my description. Tip number four is to use open source art in your photography. I have talked about this in many of my videos now and I don't know how I went on for years doing photography and not knowing that I can use stunning paintings as backdrops or elements in my photography for free. Open access is also referred to as public domain and these images can be downloaded, shared and remixed without restriction and used in both commercial and non-commercial use. You see, in most countries, the copyright protection lasts the lifetime of the artist plus 70 years after their death. So once the artwork no longer has copyright protection, it can go into public domain and those who access it can use it freely without having to seek permission from the artist or the last owner. 
There are so many websites where you can find open access images, but some of my favorites are the Raw Pixels, the Met Museum, Smithsonian's, and so many more. Most of these have a great search system that lets you look for open access images, but to be sure, when you find an image that you want to use, look for the logo that will indicate public domain, creative commons, or open access. My favorite way to incorporate these into my own art is to use these beautiful paintings as backgrounds. I just dropped a Photoshop tutorial on how to do this technique. I also experimented with adding elements of paintings like flowers into my image to create sort of an art collage. But the possibilities are absolutely endless and it's quite addictive looking through collections of images and trying to come up with some creative ideas on how to use them. Tip number five, trick the color wheel. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the color wheel and some of the most pleasing to the eye color combinations like complementary color scheme that uses colors on the opposite side of the wheel, analogous colors of the same color family and monochromatic scheme using predominantly one color, plus lots of the other color combinations that can get really complex. Well, for years, I have been using this trick to make sure that all colors in the picture work well together no matter where I will be shooting. And it is using pastel and neutral colors. Pastel pink, blue, yellow, natural brown, nude, light gray, all of these are awesome options that will look great combined with any other color. When I choose the clothing for the model, I will mostly go for these colors. They will look great on the beach or in the park or in the studio photo shoot. You can be sure that they will not clash with the surroundings and always look well put together. Tip number six, the sitting pose. If you are working with a model that is not very experienced and has a hard time coming up with poses, try sitting them down. I know it might sound very basic, but trust me, it will make them pose so much better. People normally feel a lot more comfortable and at ease when they sit down. I think it's something to do with being able not to hold your own weight and let those muscles relax. So it will translate with the more natural, less awkward pose. In the studio, I always start with the model sitting on the chair or on the floor. Adding a small table to rest the arms on is also a great idea. Outdoors, I like to look for a spot where the model can sit on something like a tree trunk or a clean patch of grass. Bonus points if you can also find a tree for them to rest the back on. Tip number seven, don't get hung up on gear. I know you all have heard gear doesn't matter about a thousand times, but it really is true. And if you currently can't afford the camera and the lens of your dreams, I just want to let you know that it shouldn't stop you from creating beautiful art. Here I'm using my very first camera, Canon Rebel XS with the kid zoom lens. Canon doesn't even make this anymore, you can buy it on eBay for like 50 or 100 dollars. And this is the result I got. If you know how to work with light and your subject, you should be able to use even the lowest costing gear to create some really good pictures. Recently, I did quite a few photo shoots using Canon RP, an amazing budget full frame mirrorless camera and my old EF Nifty 50 and the images came out so beautiful that even I was surprised myself. Here are some more comparisons. On the left you see images taken with budget gear and on the right top of the line. Is there a huge difference? No. So don't get discouraged if you can't afford a super expensive camera yet. Continue working on your skill and practice, practice, practice. Tip number eight, DIY, do it yourself. From crowns to dyeing clothes and creating props for shoots, if I can do it myself, you best believe that I will. And I don't want to hear any excuses like, I don't know how, I'm not good at crafting. You have to promise me that you will at least try it. And you never know, you might get addicted to me like me. Plus, I have some extremely easy DIY tutorials on my YouTube channel that even if you have two left hands, you will be able to make these. The more you actually create with your own hands for the photo shoot, the more exciting, personal and rewarding it's going to feel when you see the finished images. Being crafty is a huge advantage in photography and it will make you more creative overall. So if you struggle with that, take on a simple DIY like this crown. I'll leave the link to the tutorial in the description. 
Tip number nine, use your fear as inspiration. If you ever feel uninspired or stagnant in your work, you should try this and trust me, it will change the way you photograph. A few years ago, I traveled to Mexico and one of my photographer friends had a cheap underwater case for the camera. I really wanted to use it, but one of my biggest fears is being underwater. So I trained myself day after day sitting at the bottom of the pool to get used to the water and finally I felt confident enough to do this photo shoot and it felt absolutely amazing to get this final picture. I realized that it wasn't so scary after all and if I can do this, I can really do anything. That same year I did another thing that terrified me taking pictures of strangers on the street. It put me so far out of my comfort zone and made me so much more confident after. If you are afraid to do something, push yourself to do it and little things like working with new clients won't even scare you anymore. The final tip number 10 is to find photographer friends. Yes, I know most of you weirdos are super introverted like me, but finding some friend photographers in your area can really improve your skills. When I started out, I loved going to group amateur photo shoots where photographers and models can meet and create art in a friendly and safe space. Now, where do you find these people? I recommend looking for photographer groups on Facebook in your area or simply finding like-minded people on Instagram. You never know what you can learn from other photographers and in my opinion, it really helps having friends with similar hobbies, friends that understand your photography struggle and can support you. Now, do you have many photographer friends or are you kind of a loner? Let me know in the comments down below. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out top 10 photography tips part one or my top tips in Photoshop videos. I will link both of them in the description down below and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.